In this episode, let us explore as to how to remove the duplicate characters present in the input stream. In fact, this program happens to be one of the most frequently asked programming interview questions and let's explore how to write a Java code for it. Let me consider my input string as silly spiders. Well, if you will notice it, there are many duplicate characters present in the input string. For example, S has occurred thrice, I has occurred twice, and L has occurred twice. What I am supposed to do in this program is to eliminate the duplicate characters present in the input string, which means that even though there are three S's present in the input string, my output should contain just one like this. Similarly, even though there are two I's in the input string, my output should just contain one like this. And same is the case with L that I should be having just one L present. But in as far as the remaining characters are concerned, they all have not repeated. There are no duplicates and hence they all would be present as it is in the output as well. So for the input silly spiders, the output that I am supposed to get is this. And how do I write the program? Let's explore. Well, if I have to obtain a solution to this, then I'll have to make use of the map data structure. Map is such a data structure which stores the data as the key value pair and Java supports three types of maps. The hash map, the linked hash map and the tree map. And the difference between them is the order in which they hold the data, but the commonality is that all of them will hold the data in the form of a key value pair. After all, they are maps, so they have to hold it in the form of key value pair. But which of these three maps to use? Well, you know by now that the hash map stores the data in some random order, though actually it is internally by making use of a hash function. But anyway, for the user, it appears as a random order. In the linked hash map, the data is stored in the same order as what it appears in the input string. And in the tree map, the data is stored in the alphabetical order with respect to the keys. So, if you'll ask me which of the three maps I'm supposed to use, well, you can make use of any of the three maps. I would go in to make use of the linked hash map because the sequence in which the data is stored in the linked hash map matches with my input string. So let's proceed and see as to how by making use of the linked hash map, I would be able to obtain a solution to this problem. And for those who do not understand about the maps and the different types of maps, let me caution saying that this is not an independent episode and I would insist all such viewers to get back and watch my episode 17, 18, 19 and 20 after which you will have to continue watching this. And for those who have watched all those episodes, let's proceed and see how by making use of the linked hash map, I will be able to obtain a solution to this problem. Well, this is my input string silly spiders and when I'll give it as the input to my program of this episode, this is the output that I'm supposed to get. For the time being, I don't want to have the output on the screen and hence I would eliminate the output. And as I have just now discussed, I would be making use of the linked hash map and when my data is placed inside the linked hash map, this is how it looks. And if you'll ask me, what is the logic to solve this problem? Well, the logic is already quite evident. I don't know if you are actually noticing it or not. Look at the keys present in the map. And you may ask, what is the big deal? Well, look at the output. I hope now you have been able to sense that the output is nothing but the keys that are there here. Well, don't get confused. Please understand one thing that map is such a data structure in which the keys always would be unique. It is only the values that could be repetitive. So all that you have to do as a programmer is to accumulate all these keys and print it. And the output that we get would be that. And that is what is the expected output. So the logic is pretty simple. All that I have to do is to gather all these keys inside a string. And how do I do that? Let's explore. Well, if I will have to accumulate all these keys inside a string, firstly, 
I need to create an empty string and I would be creating an empty string called result. This is the way I do it in the code and this is how I do it in my animation. And if you'll ask me what next, well, each time I have to keep accessing these keys and keep adding it to the result and keep obtaining the new result. In other words, what I mean to say is that I need to access the key by specifying data dot get key, add it with the result and obtain the new result. And this line of code, I will have to apply it on the entire length of my linked hash map, which means I will have to enclose this within a loop and you know I would not make use of any of the traditional loops rather I would enclose that statement within a for each loop like this yes this is the for each loop which helps me to travel along the entire length of the map each time taking out the key and adding it to my result and keep giving me the new result and by the time I finish the entire traversal I would have come out of the loop and I will just print the result anyway how does this logic apply on the map? Let me explain. So, according to my logic, initially my string called result is empty. Next, I would enter the loop and I would access the value by specifying data dot get key and s is the data that I get. Next, I need to add that s with the result and whatever I get, this happens to be the new result. After which, since I am in the loop, I'm going to iterate to the next data. The next data is i and I would take that, add it to the result and I get the new result like this. After which, again, since I'm in the loop, I have to iterate to the next data. The next data as well is taken and added to the result and we get the new result. Well, this way, as I keep iterating through the loop, each of the keys keep getting added to the string and this is what I get finally in the result and anyway the print statement which is there outside the loop is going to print the result for me. How does the complete program look like? Let's explore. I would begin by creating a new string object called silly spiders. Next using the two care array method I'm going to extract the data from the object and place it inside an array y. I'm also going to compute the size. After which I need to store my data silly spiders inside a map and you know we have decided to make use of the linked hash map. This is the piece of code which would create an empty linked hash map and this is the piece of code which is going to place silly spiders inside the linked hash map. Well this is what we have already discussed in the episode 17. Not just that this is today's logic. Yes. Initially, the string result is going to be empty, but the for each loop is going to ensure that all the keys are accumulated inside the string called result and finally we are going to print it anyway. This is the complete program and when I'll execute, this is the output. So, I'm sure you've been able to understand as to how to eliminate the duplicate characters present in the input string and to learn more of strings all that you have to do is to continue watching this episode series thanks for watching let's meet in the next episode